right, you guys, what's going on? It's your boy 360 Stacks in this thing, baby, representing TKOG. And uh, I'm not going to do a full combo tutorial, but I am going to show you guys um, something I've been experimenting with with my Dragon Maids. Shout out to the ban list. I don't really do reactions because like, I feel like when I do reaction, it's fake because I already knew what was on the ban list. And the whole point of a reaction is like for you, it to be your first time seeing it. So you're kind of reacting to your everything. Like it's like your initial thoughts when you first see it versus when you do like a reaction after you already see it, it's totally different. So, I mean, but if you guys want to know my thoughts, I can make a separate video about that. But I actually been modifying my list and I was unsure if I wanted to go the route that I was trying to go. Uh, by the way, I got my wisdoms pulled, so yeah, that's gonna be, it might sound weird in the videos, but I was already, like, feeling that I wanted to take this route, but I was unsure, because it required for me to play three additional cards in my deck that can be pseudo garnets if I can't combo, but the ceiling was a lot higher because I basically was, I was trying to figure out how I can buster lock, so what I wanted to really do, I was like, uh, Morphe's Sloth is amazing, he's an incredible card, but I was like, what really would play around even cards like uh, Super Poly? Like, because your, your opponent can just, like, draw face priority Super Poly, right? And, and, you know, that can be a problem depending on what targets they play. But I was like, yo, like, how do I just lock my opponent out without using DP or Scythe? Which, you know, Verde's banned now, but I still wasn't going to play those cards in my Dragon Maid deck. I actually like it how it is. And um, I was messing around with my cards. And I literally created a combo that's a one-card buster lock with this deck, and it's amazing. And I really want to show you guys because I think this is a great route to take this format. Despi is everywhere. It has such a great Flunder matchup and such a good Dragon matchup now because its new fusion that came out really does change the game. It doesn't mean that you auto-win when you play against Flunders when you're playing Despi, or you auto-win if you're playing Despi and you just happen to play against a Dragon deck. It just means that now that deck has even more potential win conditions as a part of his engine. So I felt to combat that more efficiently, that I needed to consistently have ways to out, uh, pretty much lock them out of their extra deck. Because without their extra deck, you know, they're not gonna really be contact using my whole board away with like setting a falling of Albas face down, which is something I would do. I would just set an Albas and just contact fuse the whole board. Um, so yeah, if you guys like this kind of content, definitely consider subscribing. Leave a note, uh, click the notification bell if you are subscribed. Leave a like if you liked the video, leave a dislike if you didn't like the video. And if you want to take it a step further, you can always join my Discord or my Patreon. Both have their own exclusive benefits. The Discord's free and it's a huge community. I think we're pushing 400 members, which is awesome. That's big for me. For some, it might not be, but it's a huge milestone. Uh, the Patreon offers a tutoring, mentoring. Uh, we also, all my side decks and how to side and how I personally side and my thoughts on how I do it are all things that come um, just as exclusive benefits to Patreons. Um, so let's get started, you guys. So I have the Apollo cards that I'm going to be interacting with, and oh my goodness, sheesh! It, it just started healing. Like I just got it pulled out yesterday, and the pain was ridiculous. But now I feel weird when I talk. But so it's just Remus by itself. This is a one card many things. What I've learned with my list, Remus has so many routes. Like there's so many possibilities with just this one card. It makes it to where like I never. I don't want to go back to ever playing my deck without him because the level of extension, manipulation, and just the resource and the economics that this card allows you to generate and providing all those options and those routes, utility-based options that give you coverage in different matchups, I think it just makes Remus like one of the best cards ever. Like He's one of the strongest Yu-Gi-Oh cards, just period. He's so good. And he's already one card, two interruptions, plus four follow-ups in my deck. He's also a one-card Crystal Wing to play around a beer, which isn't very popular at all. But on top of that, he also is a one-card Buster Lock. And I'm going to show you guys how. I was tweaking, and I was tweaking my list, and I was like, how the heck do I... Because Dragon Destruction, the Buster guy, the little Destruction Sword guy is legal. And I was like, how the heck do I, like, use this card in my Dragon deck? Like, how do I do it? And I created this combo. I'm going to show you guys. So we're going to start by activating Remus. You're gonna add Ravine. So it's Remus plus a discard gets you a full Buster Lock with really good follow up. Um, the next thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and activate that Ravine. You'll discard your card. This is the only extra card that's needed for the combo. So it's just a one card combo plus a discard. So it's really just a one card combo. You're gonna go ahead and discard Add Legatus, special him, use Remus's uh, graveyard effect, and special him. Then you're gonna synchro summon with both of these. Ooh, please don't start hurting again. Mm. Uh, you're gonna summon Gay Dirt. 
you're gonna activate his effect and what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna add Zephyros. This is required. Um, to make this a full one card combo, you have to play Zephyros, otherwise you cannot do this with Remus alone. Trust me, I tried playing without because I was not um, at, I was not very like fond of playing even more, less utility cards and like more pseudo bricks. But it's like a necessary evil. It's it's a lower, it's like a low risk with the higher reward in my opinion because I do play sixty and I basically play five bricks: the Zephyros, the Baby Rock, the Legatus, uh, the Mistletoe, and the Dragoonity Glow pseudo. If I don't have any dragons in grave, so all five of those are considered bricks, but really they they're playable in almost every hand. So you're gonna add him, discard him. You're gonna summon him by bouncing the ravine. Really important that you get ravine back because that's how, the only way that I was able to do it without requiring like another dragon's ravine. Because I was like, dang, this combo, I need another dragon's ravine. Then I was like, oh, what if I just played Zephyros? Because I could just use the same dragon's ravine so that way I can do it more efficiently with just one card. Because if it was more than a one card combo, it'd be less realistic and more of a thing that people wouldn't even want to try. Because you know, with that same two card combo, let's say if it was a real life two specific cards, you know. You could probably do a lot more with this deck than just a Buster Lock Pass, you know. But if you have any form of extension, you can end on Seal, which is really good. And you can also get access to Tidying if the extension is a Graveyard Reborn card. So you're going to summon Rom. Uh, you're going to activate his effect. You're going to add uh, Glow and activate it. Then you're going to use the Glow to go ahead and search Dragoonity Arma Mistleton. And you're going to summon the uh, Mistleton by tributing Rom. And use his effect to equip the Gator that you summoned initially, and you're gonna go ahead and activate Glow to special him from the Spell Trap Zone, and you're gonna activate Gaydurk again. Typically what I'd like to do is, um, I go into a Chamber, add her and discard her, if you have a Reborn card. But at the same time, if you really just want to kind of get that extra body that you're gonna need, you can also add Baby Rock and discard Baby Rock. And I'll explain the differences Normally I go for Chamber because if I want one extra, if I need a, an extender or I have an extender, I normally like to search Tiding. I always prioritize Tiding over any other form of interruption most of the time because it plays around everything. Droplets, Dark Ruler, you name it. You know, it really makes it a lot harder for your opponent to answer your board. And when you don't have Buster Lock, having Tiding also plays around the Contact Fusion mechanic that uh, Despia will have with their new Fusion. Because if you summon Albaz, you know, you can bounce it. If they set a face down, you're just going to bounce to a Titan because you know they're going to contact Fuse. Um, so you can add Baby Rock, discard it. I'll leave Chamber just for ex example. Uh, we'll overlay into um, King of Otun. Then you're going to detach the Gator. And what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to special out Black Metal. Okay? Then you're going to link Black Metal into Striker. One Metal, two Striker. Add Red MD and add Blue Sector Launch. Uh, the next thing that you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and take these two. Um, my bad. You're going to take these two, the Striker and the Baby Rock, and you're going to summon Protector Wolf of the Destruction Sword. It takes any two monsters to make, which is mad convenient. You're going to activate his effect and send Dragon Buster Destruction Sword from your deck to your grave. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to activate Ravine. And you're going to discard that Blood Sector Launch you search. So that's how you keep this a one-card combo fully without requiring any extra cards. So it's one card with discard. It's always a one-card combo, though. If a, a one-card combo requires a discard, it's a one-card combo. It, the number of cards required for a combo are specific names, right? So for Virtual Worlds, all their combos are two-card combos, but you might require one or two discards. It's still a two-card combo. Um, so you're going to use Ravine, and you're actually going to go ahead, and you can either... Add Armor Leviton, or you can discard Armor Leviton. It depends if you have another Ravine or another discard outlet you need to use this for. You can use him for Changeover to Fusion Summon with to make Dragon Age Shao. You know, it just depends what the rest of your hand says. But just going off of this combo alone, you're going to send the Armor Leviton. Uh, the next thing that you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to Banish the Whelp, Summon Red MD, and you're going to go ahead and activate Red MD, and you're going to summon Armor Leviton. When this card is no more special summon, you can activate its effect to actually equip a dragon from your graveyard to it. So you're going to equip the Whelp. And you're going to finally link the Red MD and the Atum away into a Heretic Dragon of Heavenly Spheres. And so this one card combo will get you Spheres, which is good follow-up and a good interrupt, plus a Buster Lock, which just plays around everything that's not Flunderies and Eldritch, which those decks are the buy anyways, to be honest. I wouldn't say Flunder is fully the buy, but... 
this deck is so good against the barrier statue and you can literally it's crazy like you can literally play so much without having to worry about the um the impin um this deck also is able to summon card cards like uh crystal wing and uh warlord furious in defense and also you're able to summon dragoonity armagram in defense and use its effect to target the um the impin and negate its effects because armagram will be in defense so you will permanently negate impin which is crazy because it's also a win so you can do a lot under the barrier statue so i'm not saying flunder is the buy or it's just not a good deck but i'm saying this deck has an incredible flunder matchup because you can consistently out the wind barrier statue and impin all with pure engine and the only thing the trap would do is set up risa to literally <clears throat> protect the barrier statue which is fine because i can still put out more bodies via special summoning that are wins and I can still kill the barrier statue. I can even just hospitality for parlor, dump her anagram, and the battle phase, return her to hand, summon the Lord Bar, and then kill the battle, uh, kill the, the barrier statue. So it's really amazing what this deck can do against Splunders. And this combo is just guaranteed like an FTK against any other combo decks. Um, one thing to note that is the reason why I chose not to um, add the chamber and discard it is because having seal plays around the brave engine. Because the one thing that would really out this that you could think of that's meta relevant or popular would be someone trying to set up Draco back to bounce this. But you can just literally let them activate Draco back, declare its effect, tribute still bounce the token, and now Draco back won't be able to resolve. You know, they'll lose their token, the Draco back will go to the grave, so you don't have to worry about that. And your seal can immediately fetch you some follow up so that you can OTK on the next turn. Because this is a different kind of scythe lock, right? It doesn't activate, so there's no counterplay like Droplets or, or Cyphering Gear Gamma or Imperm. And most people are just offhand traps to begin with. So I also feel that this is a safe combo. Um, and the other thing is it's basically like it's it's a safe it's a safe lock, you know? There's not really anything that can counter it except maybe like Cosmic Cyclone or you just completely like Kaijuing or Lava Glow in these. All of which really are not going to be sided in against this deck. And most of them except Cosmic are not even in the side decks of a lot of decks right now. So I think this is a great route. It's something just to can take into consideration. I always share information with you guys as I come across new ideas. You know, I'm not really greedy or stingy with my ideas. If I figure if I figure something out and I think it's valuable, I share it with the community. Um, one thing I will say is that while this combo is great and while it's efficient and it does what it needs to do, you can play this deck without this, and it's not gonna make or break the list. It's just more like a like I said, it's like a safety. It's like a precautious measure. To make sure that your boards cannot be outed by conventional means. Because just think about, you could accomplish all this off of Remus plus a discard, right? Now, just imagine what those other three cards in your hand could do. Uh, let's just say, even if just, let alone one of them was just a normal summon, right? That normal summon is going to be a big deal. Because let's say you had Chamber. You know, just for example, let's say you had Chamber as your normal summon. When you have that Ravine and you chose to discard the Arma Leviton... And I mean, discard Sinus from deck to grave. That's when you would choose to add it from your deck to your hand off ravine. Use her to get changeover. Fuse with this and her to go on the Dragon Mage Chow. And then still use Red MD to reborn this. And then Buster Log. So if you just literally add Dragon Mage, uh, Chamber Dragon Mage to this equation, Remus plus Chamber Dragon Mage will end you on this board right here. You'll have Chow, Buster Lock, Seals. That is an FTK. It's literally an auto win. Your follow up is going to carry you into your next turn. And it's very, very just aggressive. It's it's amazing. I really like what this deck can do. I think it's an incredible art type. I've been playing this deck for a long, long time. And I just swear by it. Like, I swear that this deck's so good. People, Some people believe me. Some people don't. Some people just call it Dragon Link. I think this deck has a lot more utility and a lot more... Um, I feel just a lot more routes, exploitable routes that... This deck can take that most Dragon Link players either cannot do or have to actually play Dragon Mate cards to do. Whereas with me, all I really did was take some quick launches and some Rocket Tracers out of a, you know, a Dragon Link deck and add it to my Dragon Mate deck. And then I took Dragoonity uh, Remus and a couple Dragoonity monsters from the Dragoonity archetype and I added it to my Dragon Mate deck. And it refined the deck so much that the Dragon Mates are able to do more than they were able to do by themselves. But it's a standalone art type, you know. It's still good with all these cards. It's just incredible. I'm personally, like, blown away that this is even a thing. And I, I really wanted to make it a thing because I was trying to figure out how to do it. And now knowing that I can do it, even if I don't choose to do it this format, it's always going to be, like, a backup plan. Like, a I can always go to the Buster Lock build in case it's a good meta call. So 
it just makes this deck more adaptive to different formats because now, even if it wasn't good now, there's always going to be a format where Buster Lock's just ridiculously broken. Like, when Buster Lock was prevalent with Union Carrier, it was an auto win. If people Buster Locked you, you literally just lost. Dark Ruler didn't matter. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. God bless you. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. All right, and y'all have a good day. Peace.